Sailor! I'm Sailor and I'm going to be making a Tetsu 2 figurine from Kuroko's Basketball. My plan is based on other figurines and screen caps from the show. I'm using polymer clay, some tools I got from Michaels, and some tin foil. I start by balling up the tin foil. I use this so that the end figure is not so heavy and I don't have to use as much clay. I also have some thick but lightweight wire I'm going to use as a sort of spine. I cover the head in a basic layer of clay, then use another piece to start the snout. I blend it onto the rest of the head and I start shaping it. I'm referencing photos off to the side so that I don't mess up the shape and I can get it right in profile and from the front. He has a defined line down the middle of his snout leading up to his nose, so I'm going to use a tool to make a sort of imprint. I'm also going to draw out where his lips will be. To add definition to his lips, I'm going to add a bit of clay to bulk them up. This is going to be a really thin piece in the shape of the lips that I've already drawn out. I want his mouth to be open, so I'm going to remove some of the clay below the top lips. With that extra removed clay and some additional clay, I'm going to start sculpting his bottom jaw, which is going to have his tongue hanging out. I want the inside of his mouth to be flat so that the tongue can sit properly, and the rest of it's going to be rounded out because that's how it would be if the mouth was closed. To create the tongue, I'm taking another little piece of clay and adding it to the mouth, not blending it on the edges so that the two shapes remain distinct. So I kind of blended it in at the top of the mouth, and I'm going to do another imprint line down the center of his tongue. So yet again, I'm going to use the tin foil to bulk out the body so I don't have to use as much clay, and then I'm going to cover it in a base layer because I have to get something down before I can start adding more details. I'm also going to add clay to his neck area and blend it into both the head and the body so that they're fully connected. I use my fingers for the bigger areas and tools for the more detailed areas. So to shape out his body, I'm going to add clay to the front to bulk out his chest and to the front sides where his shoulders should be. This area is where his front legs will eventually attach. While I'm shaping, I'm going to add more clay to the cheeks. He has really rounded out cheeks. And then I realized that his head was way too short, so I also added some clay to the top of his head. For the legs, I'm going to be using floral wire. This will support the weight and prevent the legs from breaking if I drop him, which I probably will. I hold it up to the body to guess how much wire I'll need, and then I cut two for each front leg and back leg. Um, I want it to go pretty deep into the body so the wire can't slide out easily. I'm going to kind of block out the shapes of the legs before I start blending anything together or putting in any detail so that I can get the majority of stuff down before I start editing stuff. I'll also add clay into any corners to add support and to round out the shapes that I want. In terms of referencing, I'm going to reference the show to see what kind of face shape he has, what kind of tail shape he has, and I'm going to reference real dogs to see how legs are built. As soon as I have all four legs placed, I'm constantly checking to see if he can stand on his own. Sometimes I bump a wire without even noticing, and I don't want to bake him and have him fall over all the time. Since his tail is curved over his back, the tube type thing that I did on the front legs is not going to work as well. I won't be able to blend at the base of the tail in that corner as well as I would be able to with this thinner piece of clay that I'm doing. For his feet, I don't want to cover the bottom of the wire too much because then it gets a little bit questionable how much clay do you add to make sure he can still stand on his own, and the wire's going to poke through anyway, so I'm over it. I just use tiny pieces with more bulk in the front because he has small feet and I don't want to cover too much of that wire. If you ever wonder about my process, it's just me jumping back and forth to different pieces and fixing stuff that I've messed up. I'm also going to use the floral wire for the ears. I'm going to hold it up to the head and see how much I think I need. I want it to be really deep in the head, more in the head than outside, so that stuff doesn't break off. Usually I try to get the right amount of wire on the first cut so that I don't have to trim things down once they're already attached, but in this case I couldn't get it down into the head any further and I needed it to be shorter so I trimmed it. Triangles are going to be my base shape for the ear, and then I'm going to go in and add a little piece of clay around the edge to help blend it into the head. I believe my elementary school art teacher called this making a snake, and I'm also going to use a snake to make the flap for the front of his ear. The only place I don't want this to be completely blended is that inside edge of the ear because that's where I want the distinct ridge. I'm also going to add bulk to the back of his ears because, according to my references, he has that shape like a real dog would have. And I'm editing these shapes and sizes and whatever up until the moment I bake him. 
I'm adding fur to the inside of his ears because that's what he has in the show. I could just paint this on, but I kind of wanted it to be textured. I do this by just rolling up little pieces of clay and kind of making them point at the end, and then I blend them out once they get onto the actual ear. So I didn't record the brows, but they're just little pieces of clay kind of slapped on the face where they need to be. And I'm also going to add pieces of fur to the sides of his face and the back of his head as well as his chest. This is a little bit of a risky move because these don't have wires, so they're going to break off really easily. Also, they're really hard to sculpt. So you'll see later on when he's baked, a couple of these do break off. And while I was sculpting them, I would constantly have to redo them because I would bump it just a little bit and then the whole thing gets flattened out. But I think it's worth it because I really wanted him to retain that cartoonish look of having the big chunks of fur. And I wanted to add the fur elsewhere, but I can only hold it in so many places and I really didn't want to flatten stuff out and make stuff look bad. So I baked him in the oven and then I'm ready to paint him. I prefer to use white clay and then paint it after the fact because I find it easier than using colored clay. I do blend a lot of the shapes together to get stuff smooth and I find it really hard to keep the clay clean. Maybe it's just me, but um, so it's a lot easier for me to just go over and paint it after the fact. So this is just acrylic paint that I'm using right now and I'm not painting him straight black but dark gray. This makes it easier to shade when he's being drawn and it's going to add more contrast between him and the black details that are going to be on his jersey. I'm doing my best to work around the area where his jersey will be since it's going to be white and I'm going to use a small paintbrush to add fur details around his face and because my hands are so shaky, I'll go back and clean things up with white paint later off camera. His nose as well as this line on his bottom lip are going to be the same dark gray as well as the outline for his eyes. When I'm working on such a small scale, I like to hold things really close to my face, which isn't exactly conducive to filming a video. So I did the first eye off camera, and I'm using a needle to outline it because my brushes are so frayed. He has three shades of blue in his eyes and two shades of pink on his tongue. The jersey I've painted on him is a combination of a few different jerseys that I saw in my references, and I'm going to be using a light gray where two white shapes would be next to each other. Like I said, my brushes are frayed and my hands are shaky, so some of these lines don't come out as clean as I'd like, so I'm constantly off camera going back and fixing the mistakes that I've made. I'm also going to outline these numbers on the back of his jersey off camera. The gloss that I'm using is to make his tongue and eyes look more lifelike. I use a really thick coat when I'm going over eyes and tongues. Um, for some of my other sculptures, I've used a thin coat of this gloss over the whole sculpture. Sometimes it makes him look more finished, but I think he looks good the way he is. There are some more details that I wish I could have included, but he's such a small guy and his little fur things breaking off kind of made me lose my mind. I have some plans for some other characters that I'd like to make figurines of, but let me know if there's a specific character that you want to see made out of clay. Um, for future videos, I can go more in depth on the sculpting process or the painting process if you're interested in that. This video was made possible by viewers like you. Thank you.